made clear that if the reports about uh, the activity of IRS personnel proved to be true, uh, he would find them outrageous. The President did use the word if mm -hmm. these activities have taken place. But there has been an acknowledgment on the part of the uh, IRS leadership that these things did indeed occur. So I wondered why the President used that phrasing in claiming that it was an outrageous. Well, those from the IRS who have spoken about this obviously have much greater insight into what took place than the President said. And if the reports are true, he would consider them he, outrageous. Even this IRS has acknowledged that some of this wrongdoing has happened. So the president and this administration could agree. And I think you heard the president say yesterday that yeah. if it turns out to be the case, but I cannot comment on this specific investigation for all the obvious reasons. But we know it happened just as the IRS uh, admitted what it had done in terms of the, the Tea Party and other groups. Uh, the AP knows its records were, phone records were subpoenaed because the Justice Department told the AP. Mm -hmm. The President, but I find any way that that might fit in the balance that you say needs again, to be Again, it would strong. be inappropriate to comment on the specific investigation or anyone else here makes judgments about whether, uh, you know, a, the White House should have known more or others in the administration should have known more. We have to find out what exactly happened. And as I said yesterday in my statement, other than press reports, we have no knowledge of any attempt by the Justice Department to seek phone records uh, of the Associated Press. Uh, but in this situation where the department appears to be conducting a criminal investigation, uh, it would be wholly inappropriate for me to have answers to those questions. I don't have them. When did the president find out about the Department of Justice's subpoenas for the Associated Press? Uh, yesterday. And what we have here with one issue in Benghazi is so clearly, as we're learning more and more, a political sideshow, a deliberate effort to politicize a tragedy. You know, the president is a strong defender of the First Amendment and a firm believer in the need for the press to be unfettered in its ability to conduct investigative reporting and facilitate a free flow of information. Then Senator Obama supported a certain piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. As president, he killed that piece of legislation uh, in, in October of 2009 that made it so that the protections that he supported, having judicial review on this well, decision about subpoenas, and then he, there was an opportunity for this bill to be passed. Chuck Schumer was supportive of it, uh, and he said it was the White House that had problems with it and killed it. Well, I think, I think, first of all, you're talking about separate pieces of legislation and, and a legislative history that uh, uh, bears a little more looking into. The President's position on this is what it was as a senator. The, uh, but the fact is I cannot then appropriately apply his support for that if measure. If this piece of legislation, we wouldn't be having this conversation today because there would be uh, a judicial, he supported a judicial review and it came to some of this. And what happened to it in 2007? Sources. I'm asking you what happened to it in 2009 when well, he was again, president you, you, of the United you, you, States. The legislative history here is a little more complicated okay. than you present. But, but the Democrats were in charge. You had Chuck, Sch I mean, this is 2009. This, mm -hmm. I, I don't, who cares about 2007? We know what he said on the campaign trail right. in 2008 in front of the Associated Press when it mm -hmm. came to this issue. Uh, a reporter can't uh, be unfettered if, uh, if a reporter is, is subjected to a fishing expedition, personal phone records and, and office phone records. Well, Peter, I, I, broadly speaking, I think that the President uh, understands that a reporter needs to uh, be shielded. I can tell you that, as I think I said yesterday, the White House Counsel was alerted about this uh, IG review and the general topic of it several, just a few weeks ago. And uh, prior, I mean, I, and I, uh, you know, didn't How find out about that. from being categorically certain that no one from the White House's team or the political team was I involved? have no reason to believe. Uh, and so you're doing that on good faith, or this is just your well, assumption? I, because I, I, I can tell you that uh, I am not aware of anyone here knowing about it. It would be obviously. Uh, so it's down to your direct knowledge of being aware of anyone here. Hans, I, I, you know, you can ask me if, you know, somebody who works on in you've, the... You've asserted something categorically, no, and I'm trying to understand how you know that. that. I, uh, I am certainly not aware of and am confident that uh, no one here uh, was involved in this. We found out about it just a few weeks ago, and only, you know, when I say we, I didn't, the President didn't, but the White House Counsel's Office only found out about the review being conducted and uh, coming to conclusion by the Inspector General. What gives you the confidence? I, mean, I think I, I, I think I, I can say that I feel confident in that, but I, you know, I, I don't have any. Do you have thing. any facts? You're asking to prove a negative, Hans. Well, you're, you've made the assertion. 
You've asserted that you're confident that no one, you, you're the one that actually put the, you know, put it up. Again, you heard the president express his views. This administration in the last four years has prosecuted twice as many leakers as every previous administration combined. How does that reflect balance? I would say that the president is committed to the press's ability to pursue information, uh, to uh, defending the First Amendment. He is also, as a citizen and as commander-in-chief, uh, committed to the proposition that we cannot uh, allow you know, classified information to be, uh, that can do harm to our national security interests or to endanger individuals to be, to be leaked. And that is a balance that has to be struck. But the record of the last four years does not suggest balance. So that's your opinion, no, Ari. It's but it's twice I, as many prosecutions as all previous administrations combined. That's well, not I, even close. I understand that there, you know, that there are ongoing investigations that preceded this administration. On the on uh, Ahmed Karzai claiming cash payments from the CIA, and that these cash payments are continuing, and he's been confirming this and claiming it in Afghanistan, and, and Senator Corker was hoping for an explanation from the president. And he says it's now been two letters, and he hasn't gotten any explanation. Uh, I, 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 I'm not aware of the letters. I'll have to take the question. Um, you know, I, the specific story itself, uh, you know, involves the CIA, and I'd have to re refer you to them. Well, I, again, I don't know what the circumstances were here, and so you know how things are done in you know, a particular investigation have to be dictated by the facts, and I frankly don't have the knowledge of, of those facts. The beginning of the investigation, and I, perhaps we can get for you the exact date. I don't know when when that was. Um, I did nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> I see nothing.